We have observed TS-18-A for 14 planetary rotations, and the following data has been confirmed. Name, Peter Jacob Taylor. Age, 36 solar cycles. Height, 6'1". Weight, 177 pounds. Hair, brown. Eye color, brown. Profession, stockbroker. Spouse, Erin Marie Williams Taylor. TS-18-B, female 32. Prodigies, Peter Jacob Taylor Jr. TS-18-C, male 11. Patricia Abigail Taylor, TS-18-D, female 7. Zachary Evan Taylor, TS-18-E, male 4. Abduction Report, Earth Calendar, Monday, June 19th, 2023. 7.28 a.m. Central Standard Time. Primary subject has departed and extraction point A is prepped for interception. 7.38 a.m. Central Standard Time. A collision near the target zone has forced 18A onto an alternative route, now proceeding to extraction point B. 7.47 a.m. Central Standard Time. Extraction point B failed to meet minimum interception criteria, now proceeding to extraction point C. 8.54 a.m. Central Standard Time. 18-A has been successfully intercepted and sedated, now beginning quarantine protocols. 7.16 p.m. Central Standard Time. All secondary subjects are now aware of the primary's disappearance and have been tagged for remote study. So far, vital signs are within normal ranges. It is not uncommon for familial units to remain in a state of denial for several days or, extreme cases, weeks. Quarantine period. Day 7. Subject 18-A shows no signs of declining health and has been removed from sedation. In 12 hours, all residual effects will be gone and preliminary testing may begin. I have also received an unusual report regarding the secondary subjects, which I have entered below. Subjects' reactions are wholly unique when compared to previous Type 1 familial units. All parties have transitioned from complete denial to a state of almost euphoric relief. There are absolutely no signs of grief or distress. We are awaiting further test results to determine if the defect is unique to this case or if we have stumbled upon a new subcategory of Type 1s. I have personally confirmed the unit's Type 1 classification, and they have proven to be prime examples. The family's electronic devices show no signs of extra-martial activities, financial struggles, or medical defects. Since direct communication with secondaries is forbidden and 18-A has not yet completed the quarantine period, it seems we must await additional results to learn more. For the first time in my career, I have broken protocol by speaking with the subject still in quarantine. But 18, uh, well, now that we have become so well acquainted, it feels disrespectful to refer to him as I would any other test subject. After coming this far, I hardly think it will cause any harm to make one more exception. As I was saying, Mr. Taylor has proven himself to be among humanity's finest. Upon learning of their unexpected participation in our research, previous subjects have reacted with decisively negative emotions such as denial, outrage, and or defeat. But Mr. Taylor's was one of somber contemplation. He did not engage in foolish threats or frivolous bargains. He simply understood the situation and made the logical decision to proceed accordingly. After a most civilized discussion, we reached what I believe to be the most likely explanation for the familial unit's unique response to Mr. Taylor's disappearance. It seems his spouse suffers from extreme bouts of psychosis, a mental defect causing periods of total loss from reality, which include complex visual and auditory hallucinations. Though pharmaceuticals greatly reduce the frequency and durations of episodes, severe cases of distress are likely to induce an attack. We believe Mr. Taylor's sudden absence has done just that. We will, of course, confirm this information and continue to expand our knowledge of psychosis, but I have no doubt Mr. Taylor is every bit the expert he shows himself to be. 
He understands that false statements would directly violate the pursuit of knowledge decree. The few are obligated by high order to oblige the advancement of the many. Still, it pains me that such a fine specimen will ultimately be destroyed. The least I can do is offer Mr. Taylor every courtesy in the meantime. In exchange for his insight, I have agreed to end the quarantine period a few days early. Concept of extraterrestrials has been one of fascination to him since early childhood, and I see no harm in allowing him to tour our facilities before we begin endurance testing. It's my greatest hope that... Thrusters, full stop. Error code, 40285-937. Secondary power systems offline. Error code, 40-229-195. Transporters offline. Error code, 40257-389. Shields offline. Error code, 40-274-872. Warp core down. Error code, 40266-916. Weapons offline. Error code 40-231-648. Life pods released. Ship's log. Entry 194. I suppose this will be my final entry. Oh, what a fool I have been. Even our life pods release mechanism was corrupted. Every shuttle is gone now, left to drift aimlessly. Thankfully, we have enough emergency reserve power to transmit this final report. The many must learn from the mistakes of the few of our deaths will be void of meaning, and our names will not be recorded in the great database. Every word that Subject 18-A spoke was carefully crafted with the seat designed to undermine the many. The information about his wife, his childhood dream of meeting extraterrestrials, lies. I sealed our fates with my poor decision in allowing him to explore our vessel. He brutally murdered his tour guides the moment they reached the engine room. They answered his every question along the way, and then he killed them without hesitation or remorse. Those on duty watched from their stations without comment. After all, they faced an adversary who was twice their size with triple the strength. Resistance would have yielded the same result. Perhaps if we had made our final stand sooner, but no. It was already too late by then. Regardless, 18-A disposed of them as ruthlessly as his previous victim and proceeded to kill all who crossed his path when returning to the subject containment area. There, he agreed to spare the Watcher's lives if they released the other subjects. Luckily, Subject 15 was deconstructed shortly before the chaos began, but Subjects 16 and 17 joined the attack. To make matters worse, they each left the containment area armed with an electronic disciplinary rod. We never stood a chance. They went room by room, killing and destroying all they encountered. While this occurred, myself and the bridge crew worked tirelessly to divert all remaining power to the emergency reserve tanks. With our ship dead in space and our shields down, it was only a matter of time before the first asteroid hit. In other words, there was absolutely no chance of a rescue ship reaching us. With the power, and therefore life support, cut off from the rest of the ship, it was only a question of what would kill us first, an asteroid, a human, or suffocation. Since the only goal is to transmit the final message, it was vital to stop the humans before they reached the command center. To maximize our chances, I ordered all the remaining enforcers to wait for the mob right outside the bridge bay doors along with all surviving staff. Thankfully, the medical facilities remained untouched. We had enough euthanizing serum to provide each staff member with a syringe. This is how subjects 16 and 17 were ultimately dispatched, but we simply didn't have the numbers left to secure victory. The battle was short and gruesome. But in the end, I watched on the monitor as 18-A crushed the head of my second-in-command under his boot. Then, it was just the two of us. He depleted his remaining strength trying to pry open the bridge doors, efforts which were thankfully in vain. Before collapsing in an exhausted heap, still, he continued to surprise me with another full shift in personality. We conversed very much like in our original interview. 
only the information he shared was vastly different. He referred to himself as a serial killer and considered murder to be his favorite sport. He often visited establishments known as nightclubs where he lured females outside and transported them to secondary locations. Once their privacy could be assured, he tortured the victim to death, removed a lock of hair as a keepsake, and then buried the bodies deep in the woods. His wife and offspring meant nothing more to him than a cover. They were simply his way of blending in with social norms. He had understood that life was over from the moment he regained consciousness on our vessel, so he resolved to end our lives as well. In that regard, he proved quite successful. I am the last remaining survivor, and whether it is via lack of oxygen or another asteroid collision, I will soon join the rest of my crew in the cycle of rebirth. When his time finally came, I bore no shame in the enjoyment of 18-A's demise. As he grew delirious from oxygen deprivation, I took a dark pleasure in explaining how I fought to thwart him every step of the way. I am responsible for the chaos he wreaked, and likewise I am responsible for ending it. Alas, there are so many questions left unanswered, but I am honored to know my death will serve the many. Error code 40-285-938, primary power offline. Error code 40-282-763, artificial gravity offline. Error code 40-263-197, outer hole breach. Error code 40-284-041, life support offline. Error code 40-230-815 Emergency Power Reese.